Hey kids, it's Best of Fly here, hope you're well. Now for the last few weeks, I've been lucky enough to be riding this, the Suzuki GSX-R 1000R, an amazing piece of kit. I've got to know the bike quite well over that period of time, and in this video, what I'm gonna do is let you know the things that I've learnt about the bike, having lived with it now for a little period of time. So if you're interested in the GSX-R, stick around and stay tuned. Okay, so I've been lucky enough to borrow this bike for the last couple of weeks from Suzuki UK, so thank you very much to those guys for loaning me the bike. So I've really got to understand a bit more about what the bike's like, and in this video, I wanna share those lessons that I've learned with you. Not just the positive things, but the negative things too. Not all bikes are perfect, are they? And there are one or two things about this bike uh, that maybe aren't so good, as well as lots of positive things as well, but uh, that might be one of the negative things, but we'll save that for later. Other things I wanna cover off, on, in the video are what it's like in various scenarios. So what's it like touring, what's it like on fuel, uh, what's it like servicing costs, all that kind of thing. We're gonna do a section on cost of ownership. I've got some insurance quotes to look at how much the thing costs to run uh, over a year. Uh, and then at the end of the video, what I wanna do is go through my lists of the pros and cons of the bike, what are the positives and the negatives that I've learned. So if you're interested in the GSX-R 1000R, you're gonna to wanna to stick around and stay tuned. So what's the GSX-R like around town then? Well, I have to say, pretty good. There's no terrible heat coming off the engine or anything like that. It's a really hot day when I'm out on the bike today. And uh, when I'm sat in traffic, I'm not feeling loads of heat emanating off the engine, which is nice. At low speeds, there's no horrible snatch on the throttle, like some, uh, some big bikes I've ridden. It's just nice and smooth. So pretty impeccable manners. It is, of course, a sports bike, so you are in a sports bike crouch, so your visibility through traffic's not great, particularly if you're behind a little van like this. I can't see much ahead. But she feels nice and light. She's not top-heavy or anything like that, so if you need to do any filtering, not a problem at all. These big mirrors, of course, you're going to have to fold in to do it, because they are a bit stalky. But no, no reason why you can't ride around town on one of these things. Okay, so one of the things that somebody asked me to show you uh, on the bike during this uh, longer term review is what the lights are like. So at the moment the bike's not on, if we just turn her on, we can see that the uh, daylight running light is this top light at the top here. And if I put it on full beam, which you do by pushing the little lever forward there, you'll see full beam, I hope you can see that with the camera, is the light at the bottom here, and you've got these two lights on at the side as well. Okay, so that's all very well for daytime. What's it like at night? Well, at night, it's very much like this. <laughs> it's uh, very good, actually. I've got the lights on dip at the moment. Now, these GoPro cameras never, ever show night time very good, so you're probably not seeing very much at all. Uh, but believe me, the uh, LED lights on here are amazing. On dip, they're chucking out a nice wide spread a good distance ahead. I'll just turn up here, there's a slightly darker lane. Maybe you'll get a bit more of an impression. I can try the high beam as well. Now I'm recording this in the middle of summer, it's actually 10 past 10 at the moment. And the temperature, according to the dash, is still 26 degrees, which is unbelievable for the UK. 26 degrees at 10 past 10 at night. That is a hot night. We've been having one hell of a heat wave. Anyway, I digress. So here we are, down a slightly darker lane. This is dip. And there's full beam. Absolutely stunning, that is. That's uh, just as good as any car headlights I've ever had. Very nice indeed. So full beam, really, really good. And dip not too shabby either. Of course, the display on this is already inverted, so it uh, doesn't do anything different at night, which in some ways I quite like, because I find some of the displays that do have a night mode, they change a little bit too readily between day and night, whereas this one is just always in that inverted white on black mode. And the Suzuki also doesn't have lit switch gear. You can see here, it's dark here. Luckily, switch gear is not too complicated, so it's not a big deal. So generally speaking, I, I try not to ride too much at night if I, uh, if I don't have to, but occasionally you get caught out, don't you, and you have to ride at night. Uh, and if you have to ride at night on the big old Jixa Thau, then it just isn't a problem. The lighting is fantastic. So on faster roads, the GSX-R 1000R is absolutely amazing. It's got loads of go for overtaking other traffic. 
and the wind protection as standard off of this screen is really good. I'm wearing a closed face helmet at the moment and it's, uh, the wind flow is absolutely clean off of it. There's no of that annoying or none of that annoying turbulence I should say that you sometimes get on standard screens. There's no need to replace that one. And it's an absolute weapon in terms of its power and therefore ability to overtake traffic. You've got to be a bit careful actually and just make sure you rein it in so you're not doing silly speeds. That's the case of course on all sports bikes. But if you want to do big miles on faster roads like this dual carriage road, then there's no issue. It's a comfortable bike in terms of, you know, where sports bikes go. You don't feel that cramped on it. And the wind protection is excellent, as I say. So yeah, faster roads, no issue at all. So how about day-to-day -day maintenance on the GSXR 1000R? What have Suzuki left us with there? Well, first thing uh, to note uh, is obviously it's a chain-driven bike and there is no centre stand. Sports bikes don't tend to have centre stands, do they? So uh, to oil the chain, you're either going to have to move the bike around and oil it or you're going to have to uh, get yourself something like an ABBA stand or a paddock stand so you can get the back wheel off the deck to oil the chain. So that's the first thing. Uh, and then the other thing I noticed, which is quite unusual, uh, is with, with regard to the tyres. When you want to pump the tyres up, this is fitted with um, valves that are the straight down type. So um, they can be quite fiddly to get at unless you've got a pump that has a right angle connector. Uh, lots of manufacturers these days actually put right angle valves on, which I personally prefer. Just a bit easier to get at. The uh, GSXR 1000R doesn't have that. Minor point, but just something to be aware of. Uh, other than that, it's just like any other bike. Stick to the maintenance, make sure you replace the brakes and the tyres when needed. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how long they last because I haven't had the bike long enough to uh, have to replace them. But uh, I see no reason why this can be any harder to maintain than any other bike. So since I've uh, been riding the big old GSXR 1000R, I've been averaging, according to the bike's computer at least, 45.2 miles per gallon. And I've been uh, riding the bike, well, relatively hard and in all its riding modes as well. And in fact, as I'm on my way to uh, fuel up now, it's worth just mentioning the riding modes on here. It has three riding modes, A, B and C. A being the most aggressive, and then B and C gradually softening up in the usual way. And this is one of the few bikes that I've ridden where actually you can feel a difference on the riding modes. I mean, the bike is blisteringly fast in every mode, but definitely in the A mode, it feels the quickest, the throttle's much more responsive. But if you're gonna be gonna go, you know, poodle around town and so on, then stick her in C for that, and that works a treat, and there is definitely, as I say, a noticeable difference, which is very, very nice. So yeah, as I say, hovering around the 45 miles per gallon seems to be where the bike is at home regardless of how you ride it which seems well compared to cars rubbish but compared to motorcycles seems okay doesn't it for a thousand cc sports bike i'm absolutely uh, chuffed that suzuki haven't gone down the keyless route with this it's got a normal filler on here which you actually use the key for i do find uh, keyless to be a bit of a well i'm not sure that it adds too much to riding a bike let's put it like that just another thing to go wrong. I've never had an issue using a key on any sort of engine before. But anyway, that's just sort of a pet hate of mine. You might, uh, you might love keyless bikes. Anyway, I am in need of a bit of fuel before my next uh, longer ride on the bike. So uh, just popping up to Timmy Tesco's for some motion lotion. Let's uh, fill her up and see if there's any surprises there. I'm not expecting any. Right, is my favorite pay at pump pump available. Well, actually, I don't really have a favourite pet pump pump, to be fair. Let's just use this one. Look at that uh, diesel or whatever on the floor there. I'll be careful about that. I'll jump back on the bike. Right, neutral, easy to select. Stand, easy to find. Right, cap. Opens up backwards, which is the normal way, as far as I'm concerned. Excellent. Right, well, glad to say. Nothing unusual about filling up with the bike. Caps easy to undo, hinged at the back, all is well. Feet feel like they've been, well they're on an ice rink after all that spilt fuel down there. Clicks back home nicely, excellent. Oh, really careful of this slippy stuff. and the fuel gauge has instantly gone to full up. 
which is another thing that uh, the pet hate a bomb, it takes ages for the fuel gauge to register. But no problems on the uh, GSXR 1000. R. No surprises at the full fuel station as expected. And seems uh, you know pretty reasonable on fuel consumption as well. So uh, I think that is pretty much all there is to know about fueling up the GSXR 1000R. So at the start of the video, I promised you uh, some figures about cost of ownership. How much is this bike going to cost you to keep in the garage? So uh, I've got hold of some figures. Uh, obviously, these only apply to the UK and for somebody in my sort of circumstance. But I thought it's worth just talking you through them anyway to give you an indication of the sorts of costs involved in keeping a bike like this in your garage ready to ride. So first thing, road tax. Of course, it's over 600cc, so it comes in the top tier of vehicle excise duty here in the UK. That's going to cost you £88 per year. Uh, the next thing, uh, went to my friends at uh, Principal and, and got an insurance quote. They have my details available, can run off quotes quite easily for me, which is great. So this obviously is only indicative uh, quote. It works for somebody like me that's got full no claims bonus, keeps the bike garage, lives in the area I live and so on. So, you know, you have to apply this to your particular situation. But if it was me insuring this bike, Principal tell me it would cost me £599.50 with a £600 excess. And for a 200 brake horsepower bike, I think that is absolutely amazing. So great quote from Principal, uh, I think, for this. Uh, 600 quid a year uh, for a 200 brake horsepower bike, excellent uh, cost on insurance. And then servicing, uh, I went to my favourite uh, local Suzuki dealers, that's Ford and Ellis down in Chesham, to ask them if this was my bike, what would I have to ch um, pay to keep the thing serviced? So first thing is 600 mile service, you have to get that done of course after it's run in, uh, and that one would cost you £115 or thereabouts. Uh, and then after that the service intervals are oddly every 7,500 kilometres, which uh, I looked up, that's actually 4,660 miles, which is quite a short service interval, but then I suppose it's a bit of a bit of a thoroughbred bike. Um, and for the uh, for that service, the first one after the running service is actually a major one that would cost you four hundred pounds. After that, it's a minor would be two hundred and fifty pounds. After that, a major again at four hundred and so on. So it's mi minor, major, minor, major, two fifty or four hundred pounds. So uh, totting that up to try and make up some sort of a, a price for the year of annual ownership. Assuming you do five thousand miles in the first year, that'll be eight eight pound for tax. 59950 for insurance, uh, 515 for servicing. I've gone for the initial um, 600 mile and the major one. Uh, add those up, it gives you a total of £1,202.50 for the year. Divide it by 12, £100.20 per month to keep the bike in the garage ready to ride. Of course, what that doesn't include is consumables. I'm not talking about petrol, I'm not talking about brakes, brake pads, I'm not talking about tyres. Presumably you're going to have to replace those from time to time. But uh, just as an indicative idea of how much this would cost you, £100.20 per month which is, uh, I'd say that's a sort of a middling cost. It's not the most expensive. I've done a lot of these calculations before. It's not the most expensive I've seen. It's not the cheapest either. It's sort of medium. So for a bike of this performance, actually, I think that's a reasonable price. So how about enjoying the countryside and going touring on the uh, GSX-R 1000R? Well, if you're not stuck behind a white van, so you can't see the view, <laughs> then of course there's absolutely no reason why you can't tour on the GSX-R. Just talk to... Uh, to Bruce, to Teapot One. Of course, he went round the world on his GSXR, so we know it is possible to tour on him. It wouldn't necessarily be my first choice, because of course uh, you'd have to get some throw of a luggage or some Krieger packs or something and a rucksack to take your kit. It's possible, and uh, as I mentioned before, it's pretty comfortable as sports bikes go. So there's absolutely nothing to stop you being on this bike for hours on end and doing some big miles. It's just you need to come up with a luggage solution, but that's uh, obviously the case with any sports bike. So yeah, you could tour on any bike. You could tour on the uh, GSXR 1000R, but I'd rather do a thousand miles on a uh, on a BMW GS. Let's put it like that. Okay, so what's the uh, GSXR like for lugging around in car parks, that sort of thing? Well, here we are on a bit of a gravelly one. Let's go and. Uh, just stick it in one of these spaces here. Let's see how she handles. Okay, finding neutral and finding the stand is no issue at all. And then uh, the bike itself feels quite light to lift off the stand. That's not an issue. Let's see what the turning circle's like as we come around. So I'm on full lock and I'm not going to get into the next parking space. In fact, <laughs> I'm going to struggle even to get into that one if that car wasn't in the way. So yeah, the steering lock isn't much, but uh, in terms of weight, actually shifting it around on a car park in a driveway, not an issue 
just a big old uh, a big old turning circle. Okay, at the start of the video, I promised you a list of the pros and cons that I'd uh, learned about the bike during the period I've had it. What are the positives and negatives I've learned that you wouldn't necessarily pick up if you just had, say, a one hour test ride from your local dealer? So, uh, in traditional fashion, let's do the negatives first. There's a short list of these, and I've made a note so I don't forget them. Uh, first thing, and these are in no particular order, is uh, it's kind of the elephant in the room. It's this thing, the stock exhaust. It's absolutely hideous, isn't it, to look at? It's, uh, you know, it's a. Uh, it's the fault of Euro 4, that's why we've got it, it's to get the emissions down, it's to get the noise at a reasonable level, but it's absolutely hideous. When I um, posted some pictures when I had this bike uh, on Twitter and Facebook, I had loads of replies to the uh, picture I posted saying it was a nice picture, but I would say, it's not exaggerating to say 95% of the comments, and I had lots, were that is a hideous exhaust, it's got to go. So that, let's face it, everybody's going to change that as soon as they buy the bike. That is an awful waste of money. Suzuki, please do something about the exhaust, that is awful. Uh, so that's the first thing. Um, the next thing, um, the dash on this. Strangely, for a premium top-end bike, it's a monochrome LCD as opposed to a TFT screen. Now, I don't necessarily have a big problem with monochrome necessarily, but it is quite cluttered. It's got everything on there you need. It's got a fuel gauge, it's got a gear position indicator, uh, which mode you're in and everything else that you need. But it is a little cluttered looking. Once you get used to it, it's fine, and it's a little odd that it's not a really crisp TFT full colour screen. I guess it's a cost-saving measure, I don't know, but that's something that I found as a, as a little negative too. Uh, next thing I found was the clutch. Very high uh, biting point on the clutch. Again, you get used to it, and if this was your only bike, it would not be an issue. You just get used to it, and presumably you can get it adjusted out anyway. Uh, but for me, somebody that rides lots of different bikes, every time I jumped on this one, having ridden my other bikes, I found the first couple of goes, oh, you know, it was cashing me out on the clutch. So high biting point, knees adjusting, as stock, I think. Um, small, small point. Um, switch gear. Found it a little bit fiddly to start with. Uh, but again, that was kind of a matter, I think, of muscle memory. And uh, since I've been riding the bike a lot now, it's not a problem. So uh, I noted it at the time that I thought the switch gear was a little bit fiddly. But now I think about it and having ridden it more, I'm not sure that's such a big deal anyway. But I mentioned it in passing. Um, next thing, uh, two things which are very subjective, actually. Uh, I just think it's the looks of the bike isn't quite there for a premium sports bike. For me... The looks, it's not an ugly bike by any means, um, but it's not up there with the likes of the R1 or the Panigale, which this bike is competing with. I mean, put this next to those bikes and you're gonna like the looks of those more, I would suggest. Again, it is a subjective thing, you may disagree with me, but for me, particularly the sports bike, which you buy with kind of emotion and with the heart rather than brain, you'd never buy one if you thought about it too much, um, I think that the looks aren't quite there with the Suzuki, which is a real shame. And then the other thing, which again is subjective, the last thing on my negatives list, is I just think it's possibly lacking a little bit in character. It's almost too perfect to ride. The four-cylinder engine is silky smooth. Uh, it does everything exactly as you would imagine. Uh, it doesn't really have any character. I'm used to riding my 899 Panigale, big V-twin, thumpy, lumpy thing. Not easy to ride particularly, but you always get off it with a smile on your face. This one, you do get off it with a smile on your face, but it just is lacking that certain je ne sais quoi, as the French would say. Um, so yeah, a bit maybe lacking in character. All right, that's enough about the negatives. Let's get to the positives. Well, that's enough of all these uh, negatives. So to the positives list and the things I've learned about the bike that I really love. So uh, quite a long list here. First off, it kind of goes without saying really, it's a really rapid bike, 200 brake horsepower, 1,000cc sports bike, it's going to go quick. This thing absolutely does. It is a rapid, rapid motorcycle. I've ridden, except for the new V4 Panigale, all the current uh, big litre sports bikes. And uh, to me, this feels like one of the fastest. Now, I don't know if the track times bear that out when uh, magazines and stuff have done their back-to-back -back tests. That may not be the case. But it certainly feels like a quick bike. So, uh, yeah, it's a rapid, rapid machine. That kind of goes without saying. Uh, next thing, I mentioned it before, the smooth engine. Four cylinders, four cylinder bikes always impress the hell out of me uh, because I don't ride them very often. It's buttery, buttery smooth and it just it's, it's like a turbine when you wind the throttle on really smooth lovely four cylinder engine beautiful bit of kit uh, the other thing about the bike is physically quite large I find it very roomy and pretty comfortable as um, a sports bike goes uh, now if you take a look at the uh, riding position um, you can see that uh, actually I can get my feet onto the balls of the feet either side of the bike uh, which is fine but you can also move forward and back on this big seat quite a lot and you can lay across the bike you can sit upright if you're a taller uh, rider you're gonna find this bike Perfectly comfortable, I think. Um, if you're a bit worried that the sports box are too small for you, then go for the GSXR. It feels to me physically much more big than the other than the other litre sports bike. So that's a good thing. Um, the other thing, very easy to ride, not intimidating for a bike that's 200 brake horsepower. That's a lot of power, and you think it's a lot of bike. Now I'm not saying if you're a beginner, go out and buy one of these. Absolutely not, because you'll kill yourself. But you know, if you've ridden for a while and you fancy a sports bike, there's nothing intimidating about this. It's really, really easy to ride, other than that clutch with a high biting point. 
otherwise it's absolutely fine. So uh, nice, uh, easy ride, non-intimidating, very easy to live with. Next thing on my list, fantastic quick shifter, um, which is actually on the other side, so I <laughs> so can't show you that. But the quick shifter on here works really well, both up and down, really like that. Um, it sounds great as well, not thanks to this big pipe that we've already talked about. Stick an aftermarket one on it would sound amazing, but even with this one, it sounds lovely, that engine winding up like a Formula One car when you get in the upper revs, it's just brilliant. Um, the handling on it is absolutely fabulous. It's one of those bikes you just think about where you want to go and the bike goes. No vices on the handling, absolutely love that. And then last but by no means least, and these are in no particular order by the way, these are just things as they occurred to me. Uh, I find the riding modes on this very good. They actually feel different to each other. I've ridden so many bikes with the electronic riding modes where you can't really tell the difference. This one, you absolutely can. It's got A, B and C. They have different power maps for each, A being the most aggressive setting, and you can definitely feel the difference. So uh, yeah, the riding modes on this actually are worth having. Uh, so that's it for the positives. How would I summarise the bike in total then? Okay, so in a few words, what would my overall summary be of the GSX-R 1000R? Well, I think I would say it was fast, comfortable and spacious, very, very easy to live with and excellent value for money. £16,300 for one of these, a top of a range bike, is pretty excellent value. For me, the only things that let it down are perhaps its looks aren't up there with some of the other bikes uh, and the exhaust can, and maybe a little bit lacking in character. But those are subjective things. You need to ride the bike yourself to check out how much of a problem they are for you. But uh, overall, yeah, really, really nice bike. Thanks again to Suzuki UK for lending me the bike. So that's about it for this time. If this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, I don't just do bike reviews, but I do trips and tours. I do uh, kit reviews. Reviews. I do stuff here in the garage about maintenance. Anything and everything to do with motorcycles, I tend to cover it here on the Missenden Flyer. It'd be great to have you along if you haven't already subscribed. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, do hit that subscribe button. That way you won't miss any further videos. Okay, that's it for this time. Hope that's been of some interest. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio.